Hey there, LEGO fans, and welcome back. Alex here. In this video, we're going to talk about these uh, 4x6 black bogey plates. Uh, these are key elements in the functionality of your LEGO trains. For example, I have the Emerald Knight here to help me out in the passenger cart. I'm going to take off the wheel assembly and show you this very vital element in action. Uh, so here you see quite a lot of LEGO put together, all connected with a single bogey plate with the pin on the top. We put this in here like so, and as you can see, that allows your train to pivot along the tracks. Very very important piece. Unfortunately, with my LEGO trains being on a table, they have on more than one occasion fallen off. And as a result, this bogey plate like you see it here ends up like the one you see here with the pin broken right off. And as a result, all you have left is a fairly worthless 4x6 bogey plate with the hole in the center. Now, normally broken LEGO pieces are not a big deal. You can just go to LEGO website and let LEGO know that you have broken your black bogey plate and they are happy to send you a replacement free of charge in most cases. Unfortunately, LEGO no longer produces the black bogey plate, although other colors are still available, such as yellow. Uh, most of us want them in black, which forces us to look at private sellers. Unfortunately, the cheapest I have found the black bogey plate is about $3 a piece, and that is quite expensive. So what I'd like to do in this video is offer you guys four different possible solutions to replace or even repair your bogey plate so it keeps that same functionality as the one you see here that's all put together so we can keep our Lego trains on the track. Here are the four different assemblies that I am going to share in this video. I will look at each one individually and show you all of the pieces that you will need uh, to achieve this. And just so you guys know, I uh, didn't look and research any other videos on solutions. This is just what I came up with. So if there is a match to another solution out there, it's just by coincidence. And I wouldn't be surprised if all four of these are out there already. I'm just offering them to you guys for what it's worth. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Here are all the elements needed for the first solution here. And now just for reference, uh, this is actually the assembly for the tender of the Emerald Knight. So what's not gonna be replaceable here is this two by six gray plate with the Technic pinholes. Uh, what will be absolutely necessary in this is to have the center uh, circle available uh, for the um, Technic element or pin that will go through that eventually. So we'll connect the two uh, wheels to that like so. We're gonna take our two by two black plate at the back our bumper here at the front, pretty standard, right? We're gonna take our two by two circular plate uh, in the middle right there. And what that does is now we have two uh, plates worth, and I lost my pin, there we go, uh, that we're gonna stick the uh, Technic pin in here. Now, this has the, uh, the cross at the bottom and the pin on the top, and you can there's a blue one as well uh, that you can use. I just have both of them here at my disposal, so whichever one is gonna be fine for that. And we're gonna stick that in there just like that. Then we're gonna take these tiles. We should have four two by two black tiles. Hopefully you have black. If not, I don't think any color is gonna be fine. Um, it shouldn't stick out too much, but uh, uh, black is, is always kind of nice to have on these assemblies. Then we have these two by two or one by two black tiles that we'll put on there to surround it. And that should match uh, the height of the pin on our bogey plate if we have it right next to it. So that should match up perfectly so we're going to stick this on here and as you can see it swivels just fine and it's the, those tiles are right up against it and uh, that is your first uh, solution and yeah I'm glad I did that because sometimes you pull these out and the pin wants to stay in there uh, so just be aware that that's that might happen but regardless you're not going to be pulling these out too often so that is going to work just fine the next solution has about three uh, different pieces here. Uh, the big difference here is that this two by six that connects the two uh, wheel assemblies uh, doesn't matter if it has the holes or not. Uh, so you can put any two by six plate in there and it will work. Let's put the bumper in there. Again, a two by two black plate. Uh, this time in the center, instead of that uh, circular um, plate that has the X or T in the middle, this is a circular tile with the hole in the middle, right? So we're gonna put that in there. And the difference here with this pin is this just has, and I forgot the name of this pin, um, but this one actually can just stick right there um, into that hole and it's very sturdy. It's not, it's, it's very uh, uh, strong, I should say. And then the rest of it is uh, like you saw in the previous solution. Uh, we're gonna put our tiles surrounding that, that basically replace the tile element, the two by six tiling of the uh, bogey plate. 
So that is solution number two. And again, let's just see if that measures up uh, correctly to our, our other bogey plate uh, that's not broken. And it looks like it is. And just for fun, let's go ahead and test it out. And this is one when you stick it in there, see they turn just fine. Uh, and you take it out, it's gonna stay on that. It's a pretty, pretty tight fit on that. Uh, so it's not gonna possibly pull out like this one does, as you can see like that. So, all right, so that's uh, two solutions. Let's go to the next one. The third solution, probably the uh, easiest in my opinion. Um, you have, again, a two by six plate. Doesn't matter if this has holes in it or not. Uh, it's gonna connect them together like that. Again, we have another two by two black plate. Uh, and the bumper. And this time in the middle, we're gonna have this, uh, again, I forgot the name of these plates, uh, but this has a pin in it. And it's it's already like a bogey plate, but it's a two by two uh, with a pin attached to it. It's all part of the same element. We're gonna put that in there just like that. And then of course, we'll put our tiles around it like so, just like the previous two. We always need four two by twos and two one by two plates and that is another very viable solution. Let's go ahead and test it out. First of all, let's measure it out. Looks like it's the exact same uh, as far as how far that pin sticks out from the bogey plate there. Yep. And let's go ahead and put it on our tender. And again, it works out very, very well. Now also, I will mention this. You don't want it to stick, because you could, let me take this out really quick. And let's say there was another plate in there. In fact, let me find something really quick. I want to show this as an example. Um, you could say like, well, why don't I just match the plate like that, right? Uh, that sticks very far. Now that would work. Um, it's fine, but let me go ahead and show you on this really quick why that's not the best solution. Because if you put that in there and you lift up your train, um, it lifts so high that it just does this circular thing. So if it's it's pinned in there more, it'll actually hit the lip at the bottom of your uh, your train assembly right there, right? So underneath it, it'll stop it. But if you if it's that tall, it goes all the way around. It gets quite annoying. Let's take that back out. And that's why if these other solutions that we're using, if I can grab one, uh, put that in there, even when I lift it up, it doesn't twirl around. See how it stops that? Um, it can get kind of annoying, uh, but there's nothing stopping you from doing it that way. But that's why we always have it uh, kind of indented by one whole plate uh, when we put that in there. So let me take this back off if I can and put it in there. So it's always going to be uh, indented by a whole uh, plate in there for that uh, solid all around solution. All right, for the fourth solution, what you're going to do is get your bogey plate uh, that looks like this and you're going to make it look like this. You're going to basically take one of these Technic pins that you see here and that is going to replace the pin off of the bogey. So here it is in action. All we've done here is we've actually taken a drill bit and smoothed out that hole to make it large enough to accommodate this pin, but not too large that this is super loose. So if you'll notice, if I stick it in that hole, it stays really well. And if I give it a little bit of force to push it back through, so it's nice and snug. Now, unfortunately, I did get a little too friendly with this guy and the hole is a little bit too big. So if I put in my pin now, uh, it doesn't like to stay up. You'll see that it doesn't really work. Now, even if you goof and you made your hole too large, all is not lost. Um, what you'll do is instead of, so here's, here's our uh, um, clean slate right here, right? All you would do, because if, let's see, if I put it on like that, it's not gonna work. It's gonna fall in there a little bit too much. It's not gonna give you good adhesion uh, to your cart. So what I'll do is get, where'd that piece go? Here it is, another one of these guys with the hole in it. And you'll put that in there. And what that will do is actually push that pin back up, um, but not so much that it keeps the, um, the bogey plate from actually losing its adhesion uh, to the wheel assembly. So there it is. You can't push it down. It's nice and snug. And you notice a small amount of cracking right here. Well, not cracks, but it pushes up on it ever so slightly. Um, but you can uh, resolve that by giving it a little bit uh, we'll be a little bit more liberal, I guess, with that hole. Um, so that is it. So let me show you um, how we did this. And hopefully, I'm only going to do, I only have one uh, bogey plate <laughs> to do this with. So uh, whether we do it right or wrong, uh, it's all going to be on camera. So to make that hole possible, what you need is to have these uh, drill bits. And these are numbered drill bits. Uh, this is the number 13, that's a 14, and this is a 15, 15 being the smallest. So what we're gonna do is take this, and with our hand, not an actual drill, because if you took a drill, I'm guessing you would probably 
not only get your hole on this, but melt the plastic in the process. Uh, so these are sharp enough um, that you can do this by hand. And you can also measure out your, your bit by uh, putting it in one of these holes on the other side. And if it's a pretty good fit, if it's too big, it's going to be too big of a hole and it's not going to work. Um, so you're going to be very careful of that. Now all of these fit. This one fits the most snuggest, although it is still quite loose. Um, in one of those holes. So we're going to definitely start with the smallest drill bit first. Okay, so the 15 drill is through nice and cleanly. And we're gonna go ahead and test out the bit or the, uh, the pin here, see if it fits through. It does, and that's actually pretty snug too, actually. I kinda, I like that. That might be the best one right there, guys. I'm glad we started with the smaller one, not the bigger one, huh? That would have been embarrassing. There we go. Let's just kind of make that a little bit more smoother. And if that's the case, there's your solution right there. All right, let's try that again, see if that's any better. Because you definitely want it more snug than loose. So I think, I think we found a winner, guys. So let's go ahead and put it on this guy here. And voila, we did it. That is your fourth solution. One thing before we go downstairs, I wanna make sure I clarify, I don't know if I said it correctly, but this is the number 14 uh, drill bit that made that really nice hole for us, guys. Uh, so that's definitely what you wanna use is the number 14. Uh, just to show you once again, um, let me take that one back out. Should be nice and smooth after you get that through. I find if you drill towards the top into it, it worked a little bit better. Was able to cut that plastic away really, really nicely. There we go. All right, so not the 13 or the 15, uh, the 14 works best. You can definitely start with the, the smaller bit, uh, but the 14 is gonna give you that nice tight fit that you're looking for. Here goes our test. This is not motorized, unfortunately, guys, so I'm gonna have to pull it. Uh, but all four examples are in the tender and passenger cart of our Emerald Knight. So here's our first corner. No problem, see, back and forth. Pretty cool, nice and smooth as you would expect emulating the real thing of those bogey plates. So yeah, so there you have it. Those are some uh, four possible solutions that all work very well to replace your broken bogey plates. Hopefully you don't have broken bogey plates, but uh, my city being on a, a, um, a table in the old city had a lot of unfortunate ends that went unfortunately off of the table and they crashed down onto, at that point it was concrete, it was terrible. Uh, but um, hopefully we don't have any more bogey plates uh, regardless. But um, but yeah, that's it for me. I hope you guys learned something cool here uh, anyway, and hopefully it was helpful. Uh, I do have some fun stuff coming up here, so uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see you again in the very near future. Until then, you guys have a fantastic day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.